The Alley 321. The Alley 321. All right, thank you guys for joining us on our adventures. And believe me, there's a lot of big stuff in the works right now. Some I can't disclose. Um, let me just give you a teaser. There's a Megatron Jr. on the way. Karma just happened. It just, it just happened. It's kind of unreal how it happened. But there's a Megatron Jr. on the way that's going to go to Kentucky. And of course, the Kentucky farm, I'll keep you posted on that. Lots going on. So. Okay, so I'm out shed hunting and I'm going through an area of the property that I seldom go through. It's uh, one of our sanctuary areas, deer sanctuaries. Um, maybe I'll get lucky and find a shed, but it's nice to get out in the woods just for a walk. I'm trying to figure out, I know the deer travel across this bluff here, that, that's the top of a ridge right there. I'm trying to figure out if they're going across the top or kind of cutting through here like what I'm doing. So I'm trying to find one of their main trails here because that, uh, that really nice buck that I almost got with the crossbow he came across this way a few times, so I'm trying to figure out where they're, where they're traveling. Okay, so this is one of my food plots down below the house. And all of my fall plots, I mix wheat and oats in there. Okay, so if you really wanted to be on a budget, if you plant fall oats or wheat, you see it's all coming up. This is all wheat right now, wheat and oats. If you want to go on the cheap, you wait till this comes up to seed heads. First of all, the deer and turkey love the seed heads. But if, if you let it seed out and then come and bush hog it, it'll reestablish for a new fall plot for free. So something to keep in mind on a budget. Your uh, grains, your wheat and oats like that, they will reseed. Especially if you bush hog them before the critters can eat them all. And you'll have a free fall plot again for a second year in a row. And you could keep doing that. Alright, so if you saw my last video putting the Polaris in the garage, I found out that if I back the truck in, I get a lot more room yet. So now it's really fitting perfectly by backing the truck in instead of pulling it in forward. So let's take a test run. Got some spraying done. That was huge. I mean, absolutely a huge stressor on me. I needed to get that stuff sprayed because of the warm season grass is going to start coming up any day now. Another snake. This one was by the pond. Hopefully, it ain't a water moccasin. Ah, it's a black snake. Only a three footer. This is the nice clover and chicory plot that I put in our backyard. That's why we see deer in here every day. And on that pond dam, I also mix clover in there. Thinking ahead a little bit. Okay, so that tree that was a widow maker went mostly down on its own. I haven't gotten around to messing with it, but uh, it's it's almost there. Just don't walk under it. 
Okay, just a tip for those of you that aren't familiar with hill country, you know, if you go hunting or hiking or if you buy hill country and you're looking for deer trails, don't be deceived by water trails, okay? So, like at first glance, this, this bare spot looks like it could be a good deer trail. But then you look and there's really no tracks in it. All right, and then if you look closer, it comes off of that little ditch up there. So, uh... A lot of times these water runoffs actually look like deer trails. I mean, look at that. But they're really not, they're just water trails. So just something to keep in mind when you're in hill country. Okay, two big old snakes right here. I think they were must have been mating. You see it? Looks like a black snake. Where'd you go? Might be that time to start wearing snake boots here. Shin protectors. Although them snakes, most of them, they don't want nothing to do with you. They usually take off just like these two did. I think they were mating. There was two of them piled up together.